So basically, bird sanctuaries are the ones. See, whatever things which are required for bird sanctuaries. Let's say we are talking about the uh, the trees which are required for the birds, the, the resources, the food resources which are required for the birds. All of these things are taken into account while when we define the bird sanctuary. Largest bird sanctuary which is in India is Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary which lies within Kevladev National Park. So it is it's, it's now known as Kevladev National Park but then uh, Bharatpur, why, uh, this bird life sanctuary, this Bharatpur bird sanctuary used to lie within Kevladev National Park earlier. It's considered to be the largest in India. The sanctuary is located in Bharatpur, Rajasthan. All right. It was declared as a protected sanctuary in 1971 and it was designated as a national park in 1982. It is also world's heritage site. In 1981, it was declared as a Ramsar site under Wetland Convention. Along with that, this uh, Bharatpur Wildlife Sanctuary, Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary, which is now considered as a Kevladev National Park, it is also added under Montrix record, guys. Montrix record. So, what do you understand by Montrix record? Under Ramsar Convention, there is a booklet of threatened, extremely threatened. Uh, 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 Ramsar sites which are added into this particular book which is being mentioned which is being uh, maintained by the Ramsar under the Ramsar convention and this book is called as the Montrix record guys under this Montrix record in India there are two national parks there are two Ramsar sites which comes under it the first is Kevladev National Park and the second is Loktak Lake so two of them comes under this one Next, according to Bombay Natural History Society, BNHS, India has about 72 bird sanctuaries. Some of them are mentioned over here. So, as you can see, in Andhra Pradesh, we have around 5 bird sanctuaries, Koleru, Manjira, Nelpattu, Rolapadu, Sri Lanka, uh, Maleshwara. Uh, these are the bird sanctuaries which we have. Along with that, we have these bird sanctuaries in Delhi, Goa, in Gujarat, we have uh, six bird sanctuaries. Haryana, we have two. Himachal Pradesh, three. Jharkhand, one. And in Karnataka, we have around uh, six bird sanctuaries. Uh, five in Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, we have four. Uh, all right. So these are the various bird sanctuaries we have. And in all of, among all of them, as you can see, in Tamil Nadu, the bird sanctuaries are uh, maximum. So around uh, nine bird sanctuaries are there in Tamil Nadu itself. Alright, so in case the question is being asked that which state has the highest bird sanctuaries, largest number of bird sanctuaries, <coughs> so they are present in Tamil Nadu. Right, the bird sanctuaries are also there. See guys, there are certain bird sanctuaries which are not Ramsar sites, while there are certain which are Ramsar sites. So, which, are, which of these bird sanctuaries are Ramsar sites? So, name of the site is in Gujarat, we have two. One is Nal Sarovar Bird Sanctuary and Thol Lake Wildlife Sanctuary. These are the bird sanctuaries which are under Ramsar Convention. In Karnataka, we have Ranganath Thitu. And in Tamil Nadu, we have Chitragudi Bird Sanctuary. Uh, in Tamil Nadu, we have Kanjiran Kulam Bird Sanctuary, while Karikali, Karikali Bird Sanctuary is there in Tamil Nadu once again. And uh, all these, uh, Kotan Kulam, Point Kalimar uh, Wildlife Sanctuary, uh, then uh, Udya Martha Mandapuram, then uh, Vadavur, Vandan Thalam, then Villot, these are the bird sanctuaries which we have over here in Tamil Nadu. Bakhira Wildlife Sanctuary is also a Ramsar site, Uttar Pradesh. Then Nawab Ganj, Parvati Agra, Saman Bird Sanctuaries, Samaspur and Sandi. Alright, let's talk about conservation of bird life. Now see, there are certain conventions, there are certain uh, acts which are being signed by, uh, acts which are being passed by government of India for protection of bird life, for the protection of the various animals. So, what are those uh, conventions or the acts we have? First is Wildlife Protection Act. Wildlife Protection Act. This act was passed in 1972 for birds. The act provides for what are the uh, things which are provided under this particular act. The rare and endangered species of birds including migratory birds are included in the schedule 1 of wildlife protection act now and if migratory birds are also included so it's very obvious 
that their flyways would also be considered, their flyways would also be protected under this particular schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act. This particular schedule has the highest degree of protection. Then we have stringent punishments for the one who violate this particular schedule. Along with that, important habitats of birds including migratory birds have been notified as protected area under Wildlife Protection Act 1972 for better conservation of these threatened species. Along with that, financial and technical assistance is provided to the state governments. Wildlife Crime Control Bureau has also been established. Some things which you need to keep into mind is under Wildlife Protection Act, we have Schedule 1. Under the Schedule 1, rare and endangered species of birds. Along with that, migratory birds are, uh, are also included in Schedule 1 of Wildlife Act, Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Under this, stringent punishments have been provided for the Wildlife Protection Act. And along with that, the important habitats of these birds are also being protected. Financial and technical assistance is being provided. And Wildlife Crime Control Bureau has also been established under Wildlife Protection Act. Next is Indian Bird Conservation Network, IBCN, which is uh, established in 2001. Indian Bird Conservation Network. It's a collaboration between Bombay Natural History Society. Collaboration between what? The Bombay Natural History Society, BirdLife International, Royal Society for Protection of Birds, Salim Ali Center for Ornithology and History, Indian Institute of Public Administration, Wildlife Institute of India and other NGOs. So these are the bodies which are involved under Indian Bird Conservation Network. It aims to conserve, conserve it aims to conserve conservation actions through sound research. So research is being promoted over here. Along with that, it is open to all who believe that conservation of birds can contribute to the conservation of all biodiversity and can be beneficial in the spiritual and uh, material well-being of human life. BNHS will run nationwide data gathering projects which all members are part of. They provide, they, they will run nationwide data gathering projects, right? The first of these is to important bird area projects. So what are the various important bird areas which are there in India? Part of the global initiative of BirdLife International uses the presence of threatened or habitat specific bird species to identify minimum set of sites, minimum set of sites for conservation. Along with that, this project has major advocacy, education and scientific components and it supports existing conservation initiatives such as biodiversity conservation, prioritization project and IIPA review of the protected areas. Around 466 important bird areas have been identified under this in India. Next is Bird Sensitivity Mapping Tool 2019. Bird Sensitivity, Sensitivity Mapping Tool 2019. Union Environment Ministry has approved three-year study called the Bird Sensitivity Mapping. Under this, various flyways are also being taken into account, which are there in India. See, flyways are what? Throughout the world, birds travel from one place to another in order to mitigate the adverse climatic situation in that particular region. Now, the same way as humans utilize the same the, the, the same way the highways are being utilized by humans for their travel these birds utilize certain uh, certain routes for their movement and these routes are fixed they will not birds do not wander uh, wayward rather their routes are always fixed these routes through which these birds travel that is called as flyway now that flyway which is present in india that is central asian flyway Flyways are used by a group of birds or species during their annual cycle to travel to breeding areas, stopovers and wintering zones. Globally, 9 migratory flyways. Total, how many flyways we have? 9 migratory flyways are there. Have been identified under conservation of migratory species, CMS. Central Asian flyway is one of them covering migratory bird routes across 30 countries with maximum routes passing through India. 
The study by BNHS, which has made proposal to the Union Environment Ministry, will look at around 77 locations. <coughs> now, apart from this mapping and safeguarding bird pathways, the study will also help policy development for proposed infrastructure projects for the protection of uh, protection of the birds and civil aviation bird alert issues. This is the first such tool using advanced modeling technique. Right, in which virtual reality, augmented reality will be utilized. Along with that, BNHS study will be part of India's national action plan for conservation of migratory birds and their habitats along the Central Asian Flyway region. Right. So here, basically, this is the uh, convention in which we'll be protecting the migratory birds. Their flyways would also be kept clear. Along with that, alarming system would also be designed. So that in uh, uh, regarding any uh, obstacles which are there in the flyway regions, along with that, BNHS plans to further use augmented reality to develop three-dimensional profiling of migratory paths used by water birds in, on Central Asian flyway with the help from Bangalore-based technology company. So this app is a very comprehensive one to protect the migratory birds. See, my protection of migratory birds plays very important role even in the protection of the various wetlands and the Ramsar sites as well. Along with that, we have International Water Bird Census. International Water Bird Census is a global monitoring program collecting information of number of water birds at wetland sites. The program is conducted under aegis of Wetland International. So that's important aspect. Convention of Migratory Species. So, Convention of Migratory Species, also known as Bonn Convention, it is also known as Bonn Convention, is an environmental treaty of United Nations that provide a global platform for conservation and sustainable use of terrestrial, aquatic and avian migratory animals and their habitats. Understand this. Convention on Migratory Species is the very comprehensive one in which sustainable use, conservation and sustainable use of terrestrial aquatic and avian migratory animals and their habitats. That means this is the one which takes into account the entire biosphere into account. Migratory species threatened with the extinction are listed on appendix 1 of the convention. All right. Migratory species that need or would significantly benefit from the international cooperation are listed under appendix 2 of the convention. So these are the two things who is added or placed under conven Appendix 1 and who is placed under Appendix 2 that needs to be taken into account. Right? So, these are the questions which can be uh, uh, attempted here. Try to attempt these questions. The first question was critically analyze the following statement. See, these questions were asked by UPSC. India should take a leaf out of the book of Australia which has its green army to oversee environmental issues and conservation efforts and second is how will the recent proposed changes in environmental impact assessment rules affect restoration and conservation efforts of bird sanctuaries guys we have uh, come up with this question bank 2.0 in which will uh, we have provided the questions in the form of hindi as well as english at the same time, easy to remember flashcards are also there in which there are certain links which are being provided. Once, if at all you make any mistake in any particular question, you can go, uh, you can click on that particular link and you will be transferred towards the treasure where you can take a gist, you can uh, go through the gist of that particular topic in which you have made mistake. Along with that, another link will be provided in which if you want to see the video of any particular uh, uh, educator, then you can do that as well. Uh, the question in which you are making mistakes in all. Now, let's talk about national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and the biosphere reserves. Conservation of uh, wildlife. The government of India enacted the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, which we have just seen, right? With the objective of effectively protecting the wildlife of this country. But you see, wildlife for the sake of protecting it won't be helpful. Rather, Wildlife should be protected along with their habitats as well. So, when we talk about habitats, the, the, the forest areas in which those uh, uh, habitats, those animals are living, that also plays important role over here. Now, here we have defined various uh, parks, first national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and biosphere reserves. Among all of them, 
द नेचर ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन वेरी सिग्निफिकेंटली इन सम ऑफ देम ओनली एनिमल्स आर बींग प्रोटेक्टेड वाइल इन अदर्स अलॉन्ग विद द एनिमल्स द प्लांट एंड द इन्वायरमेंट वुड ऑल्सो बी प्रोटेक्टेड एंड ऑल सो लेट सी वॉट आर द वेरियस वेरियस प्रोविजन विच आर द अंदर दिस इट आर सिक्स शेड्यूल्स विच गिव वेरिंग डिग्री ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन सो शेड्यूल वन एंड पार्ट थ्री ऑफ शेड्यूल टू प्रोवाइड एब्सोल्यूट प्रोटेक्शन एंड ऑफेंसेस अंडर दीज आर प्रिस्क्राइब द हाइएस्ट पेनल्टीज सी वन एंड थ्री शेड्यूल वन एंड पार्ट टू ऑफ शेड्यूल टू प्रोवाइड एब्सोल्यूट प्रोटेक्शन नेक्स्ट इज पेनल्टीज फॉर शेड्यूल थ्री एंड शेड्यूल फोर आर लेस एंड दीज एनिमल्स आर प्रोटेक्टेड देन शेड्यूल फाइव इंक्लूड्स एनिमल्स विच मे बी हंटेड सच एज कॉमन क्रो fruit bats mice and rats only while schedule 6 contains the plants which are prohibited from cultivation and planting a national board for wildlife which is being chaired by prime minister of india who chairs national board for wildlife prime minister of india provides for a policy framework for wildlife conservation in the country national wildlife uh, action plan which is from 2002 to 2016 was adopted in 2002 emphasizing people's participation see people's participation is important and their support for wildlife conservation right indian constitution entails subject of forest and wildlife in the concurrent list forest and wildlife lies in concurrent list thus by laying responsibility of wildlife conservation on both the center and the state right the federal ministry act as a guiding torch dealing with the policies and planning on wildlife sanctuaries while the state government is responsible for enacting over those policies and all specialized projects to save the endangered species of animals specialized projects are being implemented with the international cooperation what are the specialized projects we have project tiger 1973 operation crocodile 1975 project rhino 1987 Project Snow Leopard 2009 and Project Elephant 1988. Remember this. The year of these projects need to be remembered. That in which year these projects were launched. They may ask you to arrange these uh, projects in a given sequence. Now, more recently, Government of India has also given the protection to black buck, chinkara, and the great Indian bustard, godavan, and along with that, snow leopard as well. they have been given full protection now what are the various protected areas of india protected areas are those in which human occupation or at least the exploitation of resources are being restricted they are being limited not that in all of them the overall uh, human activities won't be allowed in some of them human activities are allowed in some of them the human activities are not allowed in some of them the resource exploitation is allowed up to certain extent and in some of them there is a complete uh restriction or exploitation of those resources all right these are defined according to the categorization guidelines for the protected areas by the international union for conservation of nature so who is iucn iucn basically takes into account iucn basically talk about conservation of the threatened and endangered species that is the function of iucn all right guys next there are four categories of protected areas which we have in india what are those categories of protected areas first is national parks and wildlife sanctuaries national parks and wildlife uh, national parks then we have wildlife sanctuaries in india total 104 national parks sanctuaries are 551 conservation reserves are 88 and community reserves are 127 now what about national park National park is an area with enough ecological, geomorphological, and natural significance, with rich fauna as well as flora. So here in national park, it's not only fauna to which we protect, but along with fauna, we also take into account the flora as well. So here, if we talk about national park, so it is <coughs> higher in status in terms of this conservation. Uh, uh projects it has higher status compared to wildlife sanctuaries along with that this national park uh, in india are usn category 2 protected areas they are usa iucn category 2 protected areas here activities like grazing hunting forestry or cultivation are strictly prohibited right 
नो ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज परमिटेड इन साइड द नेशनल पार्क एक्सेप्ट फॉर द वंस परमिटेड बाय चीफ वाइल्ड लाइफ वार्डन ऑफ द स्टेट इंडिया फर्स्ट नेशनल पार्क वॉज हेले नेशनल पार्क इट वॉज एस्टैब्लिश इन नाइनटीन दिस हेले नेशनल पार्क वॉज लेटर नेम्ड एज जिम कॉर्बेट नेशनल पार्क I think which has been renamed once again right now uh, these uh, recently there are around 104 uh, existing national parks in india covering the area of around 40501 square kilometer along with that we have wildlife sanctuaries as well any area other than area comprised with any reserve forest or the territorial water what is it any area other than area comprised with any reserve forest or the territorial water can be notified by the state government to constitute as a sanctuary if such area is of adequate ecological faunal floral geomorphological natural or zoological significance for the purpose of protecting propagating or developing wildlife only or its environment the difference between sanctuary and national park mainly lies in the vesting of rights of people living inside so here unlike a sanctuary where the certain rights can be allowed in the national park no rights are allowed so in national park there is a strict restriction on collecting any resource and all and human interventions are also not allowed while in wildlife sanctuaries that uh, in, in intervention is allowed up to certain extent no grazing of any livestock is permitted inside national park while in sanctuary the chief wildlife warden may regulate control or prohibit it <coughs> there are around 551 wildlife sanctuaries we have in india along with that we also have conservation reserves and community reserves in india the term denote protected areas of india see basically these are a kind of transiting areas transitional areas <coughs> which might be there between the two wildlife sanctuaries or two protected areas or two natural forest areas there can be certain corridors corridors of forest in which the the uh, species such as some of the animals may migrate from one place to another so while migrating whatever area they will choose that can become part of conservation reserve or community reserve so this may not be a national this may not have the status of national park altogether the reason being national park or wildlife sanctuary because the reason is in conservation reserve or in community reserve a wildlife may not be living over there permanently but rather it may be passing through that particular area on a temporary basis right so that's the reason because of which conservation reserve and community reserve is being defined now these term denote protected areas of india which typically act as a buffer zone or uh, a buffer zone to or connectors and migration corridors between established national park wildlife sanctuaries and reserved and protected forests of india such areas are designated as conservation reserves if they are uninhabited and completely owned by government they are called as conservation reserve if they are not been inhabited by anyone and they are completely owned by government but used for subsistence by the communities and they are called as community reserves if a part of the land is privately owned so conservation reserve is government owned while community reserve is a private entity these protected areas categorize were uh, these protected area category categories were first introduced in wildlife protection act amendment act 2002 the amendment to wildlife protection act 1972 then along with that we have biosphere reserve biosphere reserves are the largest one in a single biosphere reserve there can be multiple national park or there can be multiple wildlife sanctuaries as well so biosphere reserve has a very big concept a big area it was defined as a part of man and biosphere reserve uh, in india around 12 biosphere reserves are there here see in wildlife sanctuary we protect animals as in fauna in uh, national park we protect fauna as well as flora environment comes in both of them but uh, the flora is also given importance in national parks while in uh, biosphere reserve we protect fauna flora and the people who are endemic to that particular region so any tribal species if the if the tribal species is living inside the biosphere reserve then that would also be protected biosphere reserve is an area of land or water that is protected by law in order to support the conservation of ecosystem as well as the sustainability of mankind's impact on the environment each reserve aims to help scientists and the environmental community to figure out how to protect world's plants and animals 
species while dealing with the growing population and its resource needs. To carry out complementary activities of biodiversity conservation and sustainable use of natural resources, biosphere reserves are basically categorized into this core area, buffer zone and transition zone or area of cooperation. Now about these three things we have already discussed in the earlier YouTube session. Next, let's move forward. The purpose of formation of biosphere reserve is to conserve in situ all form of life along with its support system in its totality. So when I say totality, we are basically trying to conserve all of them, fauna, flora and even the people who are residing in it so that it could serve as a referral system for monitoring and evaluating the changes in natural ecosystem. Presently, there are 18 notified biosphere reserves in India. How many they are, How many are they? 18 notified biosphere reserves are there in India. 10 out of 18 biosphere reserves are part of World Network of Biosphere Reserve based on UNESCO's Man and Biosphere Program, right? So these are some of the important uh, national park, wildlife sanctuaries or the biosphere reserve we can say, which are there in India. What we'll do is, we'll take each one of them one by one and we'll discuss their significance. So first is Dachigam National Park. If you see, Dachigam National Park lies somewhere over here. So this is Dachigam National Park. It lies in UT of Jammu and Kashmir. So what is it? Its meaning stands for 10 villages. Dachigam National Park, the meaning stands for 10 villages. It lies in Zabarwan ranges of Western Himalaya, guys. It lies in Zabarwan ranges of Western Himalaya. This particular national park is known for its Hangul species. Hangul is the state bird of, uh, uh, which is also called as Kashmiri stag. It was a state bird of the Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir when it was a state earlier. IUCN has declared uh, Hangul as critically endangered species. It is declared as critically endangered species. Next is Jim Corbett National Park, which is lying in Uttarakhand. Again, this is the oldest national park of India. Jim Corbett National Park earlier, which was called as in 1936, when it has got established, it was called as Hele's National Park. Hele was, I guess, the daughter of the, uh, that time's uh, Governor General. 1936 by the name of Hele National Park. It is the Tiger Reserve. So yes, this is very important aspect. Once there was a question that which among the following are uh, the Tiger Reserve. So you should know this. It's a Tiger Reserve and it's very famous for Royal Bengal Tiger. The park has sub-Himalayan belt geographical and ecological characteristics. It has a sub-Himalayan belt geographical and ecological characteristics. And one more thing, Ram Ganga River passes through this particular national park. This is also UPSC's previous year question. Which river passes through this? Ram Ganga River passes through this particular national park. So there are certain things which we need to take into account. First of all, whether this particular national park comes under any particular policy, as in tiger protection, uh, is, is it a tiger reserve or elephant reserve or crocodile reserve or rhino reserve? So we should know that. Secondly, we should know that uh, whether it is a world heritage site and uh, if any river passing through it or not. Next, Kaziranga National Park. See, Jim Corbett, somewhere over here, this is Jim Corbett. When we talk about Kaziranga National Park, it is lying here, in Assam. The position itself will tell you that this Kaziranga National Park would get affected quite significantly because of various uh, uh, this uh, the floods caused by the tributaries of various tributaries of uh, Brahmaputra River. It hosts two third of the world's one horned rhinos because of its such a huge significance. And at the same time, recently, Brahmaputra River has also caused flood. That's why this particular national park was in the news, so it becomes important. Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary, Kaziranga National Park, all of them which are present over here. Manas National Park and all, Pakki Tiger Reserve, all of them are very important. UPSC may ask you this question from this, the, uh, from these national parks. It is a tiger reserve, guys, and it is World Heritage Site as well. Brahmaputra River passes through it. It is recognized as an important bird area by BirdLife International. And it is popularly known as home of big five species. What are the big five species? One horned rhino, tigers, Asiatic uh, wild buffalo, eastern swarm deer and elephants. What are those five? One horned rhino, tigers, Asiatic wild buffalo, 
eastern swamp deer and elephants. Along with that, it has one of the highest densities of tigers in the wild, in the world and also houses almost entire population of eastern swamp deer. So that is the speciality of Kaziranga National Park. Next is Ranathambor National Park, which is lying in Rajasthan obviously. Ranathambor National Park, this one. Uh, Ranathambor National Park lies in the south uh, western, southeastern part, uh, yes, southeastern part of Rajasthan. Ranathambor National Park. It is bounded in the north by Banas River and to the south by Chambal River. All right. It lies to the junction of Aravli and Vindhyan Hill Range. Lies to the junction of Aravli and Vindhyan Hill Range. That means it is very close to Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan border and all. It's a tiger reserve, guys. Ranathambur National Park is a tiger reserve. So, it is known for the tiger, Royal Bengal Tigers. Next is Hemis National Park. Again, Hemis National Park lies above over here, Hemis National Park. So, talking about Hemis National Park, it is India's only national park which comes inside the Pali Arctic zone. It lies in the north of Himalayas and lies in the Pali Arctic zone. It is the largest national park of India. This park has the highest density of snow leopards in the world. It is the only national park in India which is in the north of Himalayas and it is the largest national park in India. Alright, so this is Hemis National Park. Next is Rajaji National Park, which is in Uttarakhand. Rajaji National Park. Again, it's a tiger reserve. Kya? Yes, it's a tiger reserve. Rajaji National Park. Is it mentioned over here? Yes, Rajaji National Park. See, somewhere close to Jim Corbett National Park. Rajaji National Park is there. It's a tiger reserve. It spreads over three districts of Uttarakhand. Haridwar, Dehradun and Pori Gadwal. The Ganga and Song River. Not Son River, okay. Song River. Which... Uh, Song River, Song is the tributary of Suswa River and Suswa is the tributary of Ganga, okay. So here Ganga and Song River flows through it. The national park is named after C. Raj Gopalachari. Tadoba Andhari National Park which is in Maharashtra. Tadoba Andhari National Park, Tadoba Andhari National Park over here, Tadoba Andhari National Park. Now let's talk about it. It lies in the eastern part of uh, Maharashtra. Maharashtra's oldest and largest national park. See here, this Tadoba name is taken by, from the god Tadoba or Taru. Worshipped by tribals. While Andhari is the name which is being taken from the river which is passing through it. So basically Andhari river passes from the Tadoba Andhari National Park. It is under project Tiger Reserve. Right? It's a tiger reserve. Nagarjun Sagar, Sri Sailam, Tiger Reserve. So, Nagarjun Sagar, Sri Sailam, Tiger Reserve lies over here. This particular Tiger Reserve is the largest Tiger Reserve of India. It's the largest Tiger Reserve of India. It's spread over five districts, which are those Karnul, Prakasam, Guntur, Nalgunda and Mehbub Nagar district. All right. <coughs> A multi-purpose reservoir. Sri Sailam, Nagarjun, Sragar are located on this particular reserve and uh, it gets rainfall from both northwest as well as southwest monsoon, northeast as well as southwest monsoon. Here it is written northwest and southwest but it is it should be northeast and southwest monsoon. Erviculum National Park which lies in Kerala, it offers protection to endangered Nilgiri Tahir, Nilgiri Tahir which lies in Shola forest, okay. I hope what is what, you know what is Shola Forest? So, Erviculum National Park, it forms, offers, it offers protection to the endangered Nilgiri Tahir. It is also home of Anaimudi Peak, which is the highest peak of Western Ghat, Anaimudi Peak. Unique aspect is blooming of Neel Kurinji. There are see, these flowers, plant that blooms once in every 12 years. So, they are called as Neel Kurinji. The main body of park comprises a high rolling plateau, that is plateau at a different elevation or with varying heights. The main body of park comprises high rolling plateau with a base elevation of about 2000 meter from the mean sea level. Three major types of plant communities are found in the park which are grassland, then shrubland and shola forest as I mentioned. See whenever the name Nilgiri Tahir would come, remember this, 
that particular region is known for shola forest these are the temperate forests which are found in the tropical areas they are temperate forests because they are lying on a higher alt higher height and that's why they are called as shola forest it has a largest and least disturbed stretch of unique mountain shola grasslands vegetation in the western ghats next pakki tiger reserve or pakui tiger reserve which is lying in arunachal pradesh again because recent uh, 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 brahmaputra floods and all this national this particular tiger reserve is important this reserve has won the india's biodiversity award in 2016 in category of threatened species for its hornbill nest adoption program and it also falls within eastern himalayas biodiversity hotspot how many hotspots do we have in india four hotspots are there out of them it flies under eastern himalayan biodiversity hotspot along with that we also have silent valley national park which lies in kerala guys it is located in nilgiri biosphere reserve it is located in nilgiri biosphere reserve it has one of the last uh, undisturbed track of southwestern ghats rainforest along with that kunthi puza river passes through it kunthi puza river passes through silent valley national park and it consists of lion tailed macaque malabar giant squirrel nilgiri tahir and peshwa's rat and hairy winged bat these are the various uh, animals which are found over here which are those it consists of lion tailed macaque malabar giant squirrel nilgiri tahir peshwa's rat and hairy winged uh, hairy winged bat bandipur national park guys it's in karnataka bandipur national park is in karnataka it's a project tiger reserve again it's important so bandipur national park where is it karnataka bandipur national park lies in karnataka so the bandipur national park nagar hole kudremukh kali reserve then uh, arlam wildlife sanctuary and nilgiri all of them lies in a straight line over here so this entire western ghat region you can say nilgiri arvikulam bandipur nagar hole all of them are in the straight line so uh, bandipur national park is a project tiger and it lies within nilgiri biosphere reserve it lies within B nilgiri biosphere reserve it is the largest protected area uh, in south india and is the largest habitat of wild elephants in south asia kabini and moyar river are passing through it next is nagarhor national park it's in karnataka guys it's a project tiger Nagarhole National Park is a project tiger. It's a part of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. Once again, so as I has mentioned, this uh, Bandipur National Park and Nagarhole National Park, both of them basically lying one over the other. The Nagarhole River flows through the park. Nagarhole River flows through the park and joins Kabini River, which also is a boundary between Nagarhole and Bandipur National Park, which we have seen just above. Next is Bandavgad National Park. Bandipur, Bandavgad may look same, but Bandipur, as it lies in Karnataka. Bandavgad lies in Madhya Pradesh. Bandavgad National Park. It is a tiger reserve. Tiger population is one of the highest in uh, India in Bandavgad National Park. It has a large breeding population of leopard and various species of deer, which are lying over here in the Bandavgad National Park. Along with that, we also have Kanha Tiger Reserve. Kanha Tiger Reserve, which lies in Madhya Pradesh once again. It is a tiger reserve. Obviously, is largest national park of MP and Central India. See, uh, Rudyard Kipling has written this uh, uh, jungle book, right? So, in uh, this jungle book which he has written, in which there is a Mowgli and all, all those inspiration basically are taken from the two national parks by this Rudyard Kipling. Those are first, this Kana National Park and the second is Pench National Park. So, these are the two national parks which are lying side by side with respect to each other. It is the largest national park of MP and Central India. This forest has provided inspiration to Rudyard Kipling to write famous novel Jungle Book. Indian ghost trees are found in this particular national park. All right, next is Panna National Park. It's a tiger reserve. Panna National Park is a tiger reserve. See, Panna region is basically the northernmost end of the teak forest. While easternmost end of the Kardai trees, right? Kardai forest is a tiger reserve. The national park is situated at a point where continuity of tropical 
and subtropical dry broadleaf forest belt is found. Along with that, it is the northernmost tip of the natural teak forest and the easternmost tip of the Kardai forest. Along with that, we also have Pench National Park, guys. It is also there in MP. It is Tiger Reserve. Pench River flows through it. Bamboo is also found at certain places in this particular region. Satpura National Park, Satpura National Park. It is located in Hoshangabad district, newly named as Narmadapuram, Narmadapuram of Madhya Pradesh in India. Its name is derived from the Satpura range which are there in uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh. Satpura National Park along with adjoining Bori and Panchmadi Wildlife Sanctuary provide around uh, 850 square miles of unique central Indian highland ecosystem it is set up in 1981. The terrain of National Park is extremely rugged and consists of sandstone peaks, narrow gorges, ravines and dense forest. See Dhubgad Peak which is the highest peak of Madhya Pradesh lies within this particular Satpura National Park, right? Marine National Park which is in Gujarat, Marine National Park. It is in Gulf of Kutch. It is the first marine park of India. Consists of around 42 islands. Some of the important islands are the Pirotan and Chetlat. Endangered sea turtles such as green sea turtles, olive ridley turtles, leatherback turtles are also seen in this particular region. So not that the orange, olive ridley turtles are seen only in the eastern part but they are also seen over here in the marine national park. There are dugongs and smaller uh, crustaceans like finless porpoises, common dolphins, bottlenose dolphins, Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins are also found. So dolphins and uh, dugongs are found in marine national park. Next is Black Buck National Park also known as Velvadar National Park of Gujarat. It's a national park in India located at Velvadar in Bhavnagar district of Gujarat in India. Established in 1976, this is a Bhal region of Saurashtra. The park is located around 42 km from Bhavnagar. Right. So among them, uh, the important uh, 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 property of Black Buck National Park is on the northern side, it is surrounded by wasteland an agricultural field. The national park has been classified as 4B Gujarat Rajwada Biotic Province. Right. Next, Nanda Devi and Valley of Flowers National Park. So when we talk about Nanda Devi and Valley of Flowers National Park, it is UNESCO's World Heritage Site. Renowned for its meadows of endemic alpine flowers, the area is home to rare and endangered animals including Asiatic black bear, snow leopard, brown bear and blue sheep. Which are those endangered animals? Asiatic black bear, snow leopard, brown bear and blue sheep. Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve, if you talk about Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve basically is uh, lying in Western Ghats which was declared as a World Heritage Site. It is an international biosphere reserve in the Western Ghats and Nilgiri Hill Ranges of South India. Some of the tribal groups which are found in Nilgiri Biosphere Reserves are Badagas, Todas, Kotas, then Irulas, Kurumbas, Paniyas, Adiyans, Edandans, Chit. Uh, Chattis, Allars, Malayan, etc. These are some of the tribal groups which are found over here. Next, let's talk about Nokrek National Park, which lies in Meghalaya. Nokrek and Balpakram, these are the two important regions, national parks, which are lying in Meghalaya, in which Nokrek is a home of Red Panda. UNESCO added this national park to its biosphere reserve in May 2009. So, by it is a part of Biosphere Reserve as well. Along with Bal Pakram National Park, Nokrek is a hotspot of biodiversity in Meghalaya. It is also important habitat of Asian elephants. So that's also important part. Along with that, rare stump-tailed macaque. So we just now we have seen one macaque over there. The lion-tailed macaque is found in Silent Valley National Park only. Similarly, rare stump tail macaque is also found over here. Along with that, stump tailed macaque is frequently seen near the main track to the peak. The pig tailed macaque also occurs in this particular region. The pig tailed macaque is also found over here. 
along with that hullocks are common and their calls are heard all over the nokre uh, national park along with that we have manas national park which is in assam it is a it is a national park unesco's natural world heritage site a project tiger reserve an elephant reserve and biosphere reserve in assam there are certain animals such as assam roofed turtle hispid hare golden langur and pygmy hog are endemic to this particular park manas river flows through it the region it lies under semi evergreen forest eco region right sundarban national park sundarban national parks are known for their sundri trees they are the mangrove they are known for largest mangrove forest which are there in india they are also known for their uh, uh, it's a tiger reserve because because of which it is known for uh, uh, royal bengal tiger right along with that it is known for a uh, variety of birds and reptiles and invertebrate species such as salt water crocodile unesco's world heritage site and it is a ramsar wetland as well endangered species that lives within the sundarbans are royal bengal tiger salt water crocodile river terrapin olive ridley turtles gangs river dolphin and hawkbill turtle and mangrove horseshoe crab gulf of manar tamil nadu let's talk about tamil nadu region is a protected area of india as consisting of 21 small islands and adjacent coral reefs in gulf of manar in the indian ocean gulf of manar tamil nadu which is uh, in the southernmost part of india it lies at least mainland india southernmost part of mainland region right so this gulf of manar this gulf of manar is known for its uh, dugong species endangered species such as dolphin dugong whales and sea cucumbers are found here the region also is known for its salt marshes and mangrove vegetation along with that we also have great nicobar biosphere reserve which lies in andaman and nicobar it was included in the list of man and biosphere reserve program on unesco so it's a biosphere reserve it incorporates two national park galathia national park and campbell bay national park okay galathia national park and campbell bay national park right it it is home of two tribal species guys nicobaris and shompen tribes are found over here similarly we also have simblipal national park simblipal national park which lies in odisha it is a tiger reserve simblipal is a tiger reserve the park is home to bengal tiger asian elephants gaur and chosinga along with some of the beautiful waterfalls like joranda and uh, barepani falls this protected area is part of unesco's world network of biosphere reserve right next dibru saikova national park it is a biosphere reserve and bounded by brahmaputra and lohit river it is bounded by brahmaputra and lohit river in the north and dibru river in the south mainly consists of moist mixed semi evergreen forest moist mixed deciduous forest cane breaks and grasslands it is the largest salix swamp forest in north eastern india kebul lamjao kebul lamjao national park as i have mentioned it is added as a part of uh, under montrix record kebul lamjao national park is the only floating national park of india where you find fumdis fumdis are basically floating vegetation the region is having lot of swampy regions and that's the reason because of which there is one deer which is found over here called as elds deer which is also called as barking deer or dancing deer this deer is uh, known as dancing deer because of the way in which that particular deer walks loktak lake is present in this particular national park it is dominated by moist evergreen forest and has a rich amalgamation of aquatic wetlands and terrestrial ecosystem according uh, along with that we also have bhitar kanika national park it is a ramsar site odisha mein it's a ramsar site second largest mangrove ecosystem of india it is home of salt water crocodile white crocodile indian python king cobra and black ibis flora mainly consists of mangroves and sundri trees along with that in bhitar kanika it is known for its olive ridley turtles nest on gahir mata coast in the national park the park is being drained by uh, brahmani betarni dhamra and patshala river nam dafa national park in arunachal pradesh nam dafa 
द नेशनल पार्क हार्बर्स द नदर मोस्ट लोलैंड एवरग्रीन रेन फॉरेस्ट इन द वर्ल्ड इट ऑल्सो हार्बर्स एक्सटेंसिव डिप्टोकाप फॉरेस्ट कंप्राइजिंग द नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ मिजोरम मणिपुर कचिन रेन फॉरेस्ट इको सिस्टम सो बेसिकली नाम डाफा नेशनल पार्क लाइज ऑन हॉटस्पॉट रीजन इकोलॉजिकल हॉटस्पॉट ऑफ इंडिया द नाम डाफा नेशनल पार्क इज नोन फॉर इट्स सिग्निफिकेंट यूनिक फीचर सच एज दबिटेट चेंजेस सो दिस इज यूपीएससी इज क्वेश्चन The habitat changes with increasing altitudes from tropical moist forest to mountain forest, temperate forest, and at the higher elevation to alpine meadows and perennial snow. The park has extensive bamboo forests. Some of the animals over here are snow leopard, clouded leopard, then uh, common leopard and tigers. Along with this, the park also has red panda, red giant squirrel. Are also found over here. Desert National Park. This is one of the largest national park and is excellent example of ecosystem of Thar Desert. Sand dunes from around 20 percent. Sand dunes over here form around 20 percent of the park. The major landforms consist of craggy rocks and compact salt lake bottoms, intermediate areas, and fixed dunes. Great Himalayan National Park, Himachal Pradesh, started as a UNESCO. List of World Heritage Site under the criteria of outstanding significance of biodiversity conservation. So that is Great Himalayan National Park. Similarly, there is a Bal Pakram National Park. We have guys Bal Pakram National Park. Uh, it's a national park in the south of Garo Hills in Meghalaya, and located at an altitude of around 910 meter, close to international border with Bangladesh. Now it provides habitat for barking deer, Asian golden cat, Bengal tiger. Marble cat, wild uh, water buffalo, red panda, and Indian elephants. It means land of eternal wind. Bal Pakram means land of eternal wind because there are continuous winds which are flowing through the valleys of this particular national park, according to myth of the Garo people. It is often compared with Grand Canyon National Park of USA, and it is also called as land of spirits. Right. Along with that, we also have Palpur Kuno Wildlife Sanctuary. Recently, cheetahs have been introduced into Palpur Kuno Wildlife Sanctuary. Then we have Arlam Wildlife Sanctuary, Kerala. This is located on Western Ghats in Kerala and is covered in tropical and semi-evergreen forest. It provides habitat for elephants, gaur, sambar, spotted deer, and all. Right. So these are the important national parks. Some of the important national parks we have: Sanjay Gandhi National Park in Maharashtra. Recently, uh, this 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 national park is known for its uh, some of the tiger species as well. All right, guys. There is the Kanjiranga National Park. It is known for world's great one-horned rhinos. It's a world heritage site. Similarly, we have uh, Gir National Park is important. Gir National Park is known for its uh, Asiatic lions uh, present over there. Along with that, there are certain. Uh, 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 species that's the Maldhari tribes are also living in this particular region. Orang National Park is also there. Northern bank of river Brahmaputra. It is only stronghold of rhinosaurus on the northern bank of Brahmaputra river. The national park is infamous for poaching activities. Along with that, we have Kanchenjunga National Park. It's a world heritage site under the mixed site category. It was recently included under UNESCO's Man and Biosphere Reserve. Similarly, we have Sirohi National Park. It's a national park located in the state of Manipur, and was established in 1982. Among the animals that make their homes include uh, tragopan, the tiger, and leopard. It is here that the famous Sirohi lily is found, right? So these are some of the maps showing important national parks which are there in India. There are certain questions which are being asked uh, uh, by UPSC, so you can have this practice questions over here. You can. So all this practice question, guys. All right. So let's uh, take your questions and answers. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right. All 
ऑल एट गेस थैंक यू थैंक यू